Y'all remember Amanda's show? The girls room. Y'all don't know that part? I'm Amber from Tennessee. Oh, Jesus. I don't remember that much of these <laughs> My gold suit and just get to the bag. Man, you should follow suit and just get to the bag. People gon' talk, either good or it's bad. I see people gon' talk, either good or it's bad. You can choose to respond or ignore it instead. Okay. Welcome back. I said, welcome back. I'm gonna let them introduce themselves. Y'all know me. Maybe y'all don't know me, but you should know me if you're here. Well, I'm Faye. Oh, I'm Tanisha. And these are my cousins, Aries Gang. If y'all didn't watch the last video, watch it. I'm gonna link it in the description below. We are the Aries, 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 Aries cousins. I made that up, y'all. Y'all like it? So I, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think they feeling me. Whatever you say. I'm Kina. By the way, went to a private university, a small, P they're both PWIs, but the private university was very small, like, 3,000 undergrad, and then I transferred to a large public university, which was like 30,000 plus students. So it was a completely different experience. I will say that I enjoyed both experiences for different reasons. I eventually ended up transferring because I wanted more of a, I wanted more black people. And you should have tried HBCU then. Let's see, let's, 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 let's talk about the HBCU. How do you feel about like PWIs versus HBCU? How do you feel about like overall your whole experience? I mean, I've never went to a PWI, so I don't know. But with my experience at an HBCU, it was more like I felt like it was family orientated. Black people sit with black people. We want to see black people succeed. Mm -hmm. PWI couldn't teach me that. So you feel like a PWI couldn't teach you to be a successful black person? Correct. Well, I would say I disagree to a certain extent. Like maybe for you, Faye Patton. Maybe for you specifically, it didn't work for you. Like a PWI wouldn't work for you to teach you how to be what you needed to be. Well, you feeling me? Uh, I go to a PWI. I feel like it's a lot of resources at PWIs that might not be given at HBCUs. Like, okay, so me, I went to the University of Missouri Columbia. And the black community was very close knit. A mini HBCU within the PWI. Like, you have a lot of black business owners on campus that are students. I saw a lot of black excellence there but i don't know like i feel like it did push me to be better i wouldn't say one is better than the other they both serve their purpose i mean yeah that's valid but it also has to do with how your black culture do stuff there i mean because you do have some universities where like you said they make their own groups within a pwi but then you have some pwis that the black culture just they still prospering but it's like it's not as celebrated like how Faye was saying where it's like hbcus they literally be like wow like i feel like my school personally that we do celebrate each other, but it's also a who you know. It's kind of becomes like a popularity thing. I feel you on that because that's why I left Drake University, which is the private institution I mentioned earlier. Like the black culture was non existent to a certain extent. Like you knew every black person on campus, all 10 of us, we knew each other. <laughs> so, like, but I also wouldn't trade that experience either because I don't know. It was definitely, I definitely met interesting people and I engaged interactions with different types of people that I wouldn't have normally engaged with. It forced me to like step outside of my comfort zone and not only hang with black people like I'm used to. Like I made white friends, black friends who weren't like, my normal like type of black people that I would go to. My mindset when I came into college, I was still using terms like, oh, she act white. I would never use the term Oreo. Like that's just lame to me. I always thought that that term was just kind of like whack, like Oreo, like, okay. I normally have hung out with someone who grew up around white people because I just felt like we couldn't vibe, we couldn't connect. I'm like, mm, he don't talk like me, so you clearly not like me. And I feel like as black people, we get in our mind that but if a black person don't got a little twang to them, we automatically just assume they don't like the black community. In actuality, it's just they a product of their environment just like you are. You talk the way you talk because you grew up around niggas. I mean, don't get me wrong. I wasn't around black people like my entire day. Even though I went to an HBCU, me going around campus, all you saw was black. But when I actually sat down in my classes, it wasn't that many black people. So it was a lot of people. We called them locals. Missouri locals. Missouri locals. <laughs> Jeff Jefferson City locals. Especially when I got into like my major. I probably was the only black person in my class. So you would agree with the phrase that people that go to HBCUs aren't really prepared for like prepared the real world. for the real world. Because you know how like they say a lot of like, okay, with PWIs, you come, you're around a lot of diversity. So when you right. go out to your field and your job, you kind of used to the diversity of who you going to see. But a lot of people say that when uh, if they go to HBCU, 
and they come back to the real world, it's like all day you just, you kind of, is it like a shock again where you like expect it? all the blacks but then now, i feel like it's how you use your hbcu experience mm -hmm. because you could have stuck with straight black people that's what you know so when you go back into the world war real world <laughs> the real world it's <laughs> real it's world real be real, 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 real world real 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 world real world real rw <laughs> <laughs> well when you get back to the rw <laughs> I mean, it's a shocker. I will say, though, if anybody's watching this video and they're trying to figure out what school is for me, like, should I go to HBCU? Should I go to a PWI? Should I go to a private institution? Should, which one? Ivy League. I don't know. <laughs> um, definitely need to figure out what it is that you want. Kind of just go for that. And don't be afraid of anything. First of all, fear is not real. It's in your mind. So always remember that. I always people. pick the school that gives you money. Rule number one. If they're paying your full tuition, ah. go. Oh, full tuition. Right. Well, yeah. we're talking about full if tuition. If they're paying half, go. Because financial aid is going to take the, take the rest. Now, yeah. I did what Faith said. I went to the school that gave me money. And they were basically recruiting students of color. So they was paying half my tuition. And that was like the major reason why I chose that school because they were giving me the money. But I ended up leaving that school that gave me the money because I wanted the experience. You know, HBCUs are amazing. I love the band. Like, uh, 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 <laughs> I want to be a major rest. You make it dun, like that? Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> I, I just felt like pick what's important to you. Now, if you have to pick the school that gives you the most money, obviously. Also, don't be afraid to transfer. If you pick a school and it's not what you're feeling, that's like this ain't it. Transfer. If you keep having it in the back of your head, like, and you go through, like, I'll say what, like a whole year, and you really thinking, like, damn, it's not for me, or you just feel something in your heart, I feel like that means that it's probably not for you. Sound like the grand advice you're speaking. Yeah, that's there. crazy because I'm. <laughs> Share with the class. Speaking. What's yeah, your experience? Like the class. Mm -hmm. I've been thinking about that maybe my school that I chose wasn't for me, which I also attended for the money. I'm just <laughs> Yeah, it's a really beautiful school. I just feel like I go for more of a vibe where everybody wants you to be involved and not just want to be stuck sitting around. I feel like I literally kind of felt the same way the same way since our freshman year, which I'm a junior now, so. When I first got to my school, I didn't like it. But then when I got involved, I right. loved my school. Yeah. But I think right, after you get involved, you, involved you, realize, yeah. you learn the history, you learn everything that it took to make the school. So many opportunities just by getting involved. <clears throat> Stuff you wouldn't know if you were just an everyday go to class, do my work, go home, do something. Like, that's one thing I can say about college. And you're going to learn to appreciate your school more. Now, if you do something and realize, like, yeah, I still ain't messing with the school, all right, then it's probably time to transfer. That was definitely me. I stuck it out at Drake. Like, I, after my first semester, I was like, hell no. Oh, no, 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 no. But, <laughs> but then I was like, okay, let me let me try some. So I joined um, the Black Student Union on campus. I joined my Res Hall Student Council. They put on different events. I was like the uh, marketing chair or something like that. So I made all the posters when we did events. And we did little simple stuff like ice cream social, pizza. During finals week, we put on coffee. So we met once a week on Sunday. Yeah, I mean, I tried to get involved. And I, I'm a very social person. So I made friends easily. It's just still wasn't it like I wanted a specific college experience and that school just didn't have that there to offer me after my freshman year I kind of let people get in my head um, I was dating somebody at the time that was like nah you just want to go party really he knew I was gonna go get on niggas so he ain't want me to go to another school <laughs> But um, <laughs> that's the truth though. And I stayed another year. And that's when I was like, nah, I has, I got to get up out of here. But when I did transfer, I still stayed involved. And I had the best time of my life. Like literally, I transferred. And that was probably the best decision I ever could have made. College, boys. I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> there's a few types of college niggas. There's the frat boys. There's the wannabe hood boys. But how you hood and you in a university. The preppy boys. It's the nice guy. There's a lot, there, there a lot of different types of guys. Stay away from all of them. Y'all no, can't French on boo. Be real with the people. Did you stay away? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Check it out. If you a freshman and you messing with an upperclassman shorty, that's not your man. If he tell you he only talking to you, messing with you, he's lying. Okay? 
Everybody in college is trying to get ass. Females too. So just be careful. Like, move how you groove. Stay protected. Use protection, bro. STDs. They so. honestly hire HBCUs. Uh, and that's the tea. <laughs> I did not. <laughs> and that's the thing. No, but really, it's really just about knowing yourself. Yeah. Just gonna let you know right now, you probably are gonna get played at some point. And you and you gonna do some of the playing. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's a circle. Don't be naive. Right, like I said, it comes as a play of like you understanding and knowing yourself so that you don't get ass played. Right. What's the difference between played and ass played? <laughs> <laughs> I, I know what you mean. My school Sometimes. was so small. Everybody oh, yeah, knew yeah. everybody and you knew everybody. I was going to say, because I feel like. what you go to. So. Yeah. He just a smooth operator. So you see what I'm saying? He like, he talking to Bam Bam over here telling her one thing. He talking to Riri over here telling her another thing. He's I'm serious. Pay attention. That's what we pay attention. Anybody, if it's a female or a man, gonna always tell you who they are. It's just Valid. up to you to, to listen to pay and pay attention right. to, so to so what they're saying. It's easier to get their signal. Some of them. I'm not saying all of them. Because some of them are pretty smooth. Like you said, a lot of people show you your character regardless because it's a, it's a continual habit. Right. It's just if you want to pick it up. It's college, so have fun. Like I'm not saying, saying don't. Even if you do find that person, like that don't mean. Oh yeah, I'm gonna find you my freshman year, and then we are gonna be cool all the way to senior year, and then we are gonna get married right after senior year, no, and then we gonna have kids three years later. Like I don't know. I mean, anything can happen, or yeah. or it could be somebody random. Like it could be somebody that you was just cool with, or somebody you didn't even take a second look at, and then that can end up being your man. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Have fun, do your thing. Don't get too invested into somebody that's not invested into you. What <laughs> talking about? <laughs> Reciprocate energies all 2019 and thus forward. He giving you 15%, you give him that 15% back. I say give him, he give you 15, you give him 14. Oh, <laughs> Believe in equal efforts, but you know what? You know. And if somebody do hurt your feelings, don't walk around talking about all the niggas on this campus is trash. What? <laughs> when I first got to Mizzou, a lot of females told me all the niggas that was trash not to talk to so-and-so and so-and-so and stay away from all of the Kappas and all of the Alphas. Stay away from everybody, baby. But Kina, being the Kina Thomas that she is, you didn't really care and you did what she was going to do. Anyway. Okay, but that's me, though. <laughs> so I feel like what she's saying is don't go for every, experience it on your own. Right. Don't go from what everybody else's experience is. Like, right. somebody messed with Bob and got cheated on. You know, what was that experience? Be <laughs> mindful, like, hey. Riri over there, she Billy Bob play Riri, you know. I mean, you know what I'm saying? Like, that's just. I get what you're doing. Like, <laughs> like, you know, like, that's just ugly. Like, that's not even a cute thing to say. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Like, you know, like, that's just ugly. Like, that's not even a cute thing to say. Yeah. Picture it. Mizzou. M I Z. Z O U. Yup. My booty, I'm going to show the. We just showed proof that it was that movie. I saw we moving. Okay. She said, y'all money. Watch. Y'all money. Watch. <laughs> <Y 'all> watch. <laughs> My booty be moving. We just showed you that it was cool. <laughs> I see it moving. Okay. All right. Look, I'm finna move it for real for y'all. <laughs> <laughs> I see what you're doing. <laughs> 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 and it's gonna get cut, cut, cut. <laughs>